Hey everyone, please check out these YouTubers. Please watch their videos, subscribe to their channels. They're all amazing YouTubers, thanks. Hey everyone, I'm back today to review another resin. So hot off the heels of my review of the uh, Anycubic Bio Resin, which, which was pretty great. I am now gonna review something I just got in, which was eSun Water Washable Resin. This one to me is very interesting because I actually spend a decent amount of money on my IPA, my alcohol that I clean in, because not only do I print nonstop, but uh, after about 10, 15 models, I wanna change out my IPA. I take it out in the sun, I let it cure really well, and then I kind of throw the whole stuff out. I don't, I don't strain it and save that little bit of IPA that's left over. So I burn through a decent amount of IPA, and it's not super expensive, but it adds up. So if there's a resin that works well and cuts out the IPA step, it has some value to it. In addition, this is advertised as a much lower odor, um, a little bit safer, I believe they advertise it as, a little less toxic, not non-toxic, which after making my bioresin video and researching the words non-toxic, they don't really mean anything except maybe doesn't kill you. So I want to stay away from using the words non-toxic from now on. So, but washing in water is very, uh, very interesting to me. So I'm going to film, I have it in the printer now. And, there, and my room doesn't smell, so this, like the bioresin, is very low odor, which is great. It might be just as toxic, who knows, but I don't smell it at least. There are other things, you, odors you can't smell that can kill you, right, certain types of gas. So it's not proof that it's better for you, but at least I don't smell it. It's a plus. Uh, and I'm going to film my normal post-processing. If you guys watch my channel, you know I made a video showing my post-processing where I dropped the model into an IPA bath. I lightly scrubbed it with a soft toothbrush and then into hot water to remove the supports. So I'm gonna do all that again today and show you, except there's gonna be no IPA. We're just gonna dump this straight into water, warm water, get the resin off it hopefully, remove the supports, and then we should be done. Then I'm gonna cure it like normal, I'm gonna take high-res photos, and then we'll see how it came out. So before I leave you to come back with the post-processing, I am gonna take a look at their marking material like I did in my uh, bio resin review because I always think the marking materials, it's important to see what the company says, even though mm, you can't really trust the Chinese companies that much, but it's important to see what they say. And also, it's also funny because for some reason, even though there's a lot of people in China who speak perfect English, they won't hire someone who speaks perfect English to do these things. So it's kind of funny to look at the marketing materials anyway. Uh, and the other thing is in terms of smell, and I've done this before, so I don't think I'm just stupidly sticking my nose into you know a bottle of resin, but the smell, Again, it's bad. It, it does smell like something you definitely shouldn't be eating or drinking, but it's not nearly as strong as the other resin. So anyway, with that, let's grow the marketing material. Then we're going to have post-processing, and then again, high-res photos of the prints. So stay tuned. It's only going to be a couple minutes, and we'll have our answers. Thanks. Okay, so let's look at the marketing materials. So you see from this slide, it can be washed with water. It's got an anti-theft bottle cap design, which is great because you wouldn't believe how many times people try to steal resin you know they come to my house they see resin they want to steal it but this anti-theft bottle cap design would stop that okay that's i don't understand this anyway no liquid leak inner plug i have to say there is a plug inside and it's great i mean th this part of the marketing i agree with it i think it's actually a good thing um low viscosity easy to clean well we're going to test that in a minute the third one is interesting because it has impact resistance so maybe i'll do a drop test or two afterwards then high precision, excellent print details. We will test that. And compatible with most LCD printers. I'm sure that it is. And then the next slide we have, uh, this one is important. It shows that rigid resin, which I guess that's normal resin. They now call rigid resin. For the resin smell, and here we go, a certain smell. So <laughs> the, the toxic resin does have a certain smell and smells like crap. But uh, I like how they describe it. Cleaning materials, they correctly list alcohol, IPA. And then what they're talking about is the cleaning odor. So I guess the odor, they're talking about the actual odor while you're cleaning it, which is the pungent smell, I guess, is the toxic chemicals uh, and, and then mixed with the alcohol. Cleaning costs high, I'm not sure about that because like I said, it adds up, but it's not super duper high. Time cost high, I'm not sure. Washing it in IPA and washing in water to me is the same amount of time. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't anticipate that I'm going to spend less time washing it in the water than I did in the IPA. But we'll see. I'll test that out, see if I can wash it quick or anything. So those are the basic marking materials. And you see it says low odor uh, on the right and low clean, all the, everything's low, which is good on the other side. Uh, anyway, we will be coming back with a print in about 10 seconds. We'll check it out and we'll go from there. So we're getting ready to 
print is done off my EPAX X1. You can see it looks like it came out great. Um, all the fine supports look like they came out really well, even though I don't have this resil, resin quote unquote dialed in. It's the first time I'm using it. I'm not sure of the settings, but I use my Elegu gray settings because this was gray. So I figured why not? It worked pretty well. So I'm going to pop them off here. You see, I have my gloves on because even though it's water washable, I still think, you know, there, there's no way this probably isn't toxic. So let's just be safe. And don't worry that I'm using a toothbrush there. To, when I clean them, of course, that's not the toothbrush that I brush my teeth with. It's my wife's toothbrush, and she doesn't know, so it's okay. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to get my hot water. I'm going to pour it into my nasty, dirty cup. Uh, again, that's my wife's cup, not mine, so it's okay. So I'll fill it up with hot water. Again, just uh, not boiling like last time where I burned myself. And I'm just going to scrub these off and break the supports off. And we're going to see what we get. We're going to see if that really cleans the, all the resin off or not, the liquid resin. You'll see about halfway through when I speed everything up, because I don't want you to watch me pull supports off eight miniatures. Uh, you'll see when I speed it up, at one point I reach for the cutters. And the reason the cutters are there, every now and then when I get overzealous and just ripping supports off, uh, and this one about halfway through, I kind of break the tip of the tail off one of the guys because I just ripped it off and I don't think I left it in the water long enough because I was pretty excited about just cleaning this resin off and getting going. So you'll see my hand reach for those cutters and then I start just giving a few little snips at the bottom model. Then I rip everything off just to make sure I don't break a super delicate part. Here I'm trying to show you how that came out, but uh, camera's a little out of focus there. Sorry, but the high res picks are coming up as soon as this super speeded up version of me cleaning all these models is done. And we're gonna see how these came out. Uh, what I like about this, in terms of taking pictures, and hopefully it'll come out well, this resin is even a darker gray than my Elegoo gray. So I, this, this dark gray actually makes it kind of easy to see all the detail. And these look like they printed out fantastic. I won't really know until I do my high-res photos, which I'm about to do. But it looks like it printed out really nice. I had a lot of fine supports, which came out really well. In fact, I'm, I'm going to give a still shot of it on the... Um, I took some still shots while it was on the build plate. I'm going to put those up in a few seconds so you can see that all my, even my ultra light supports, my tiny, tiny, super thin ones, um, those extensions came out really, really nicely. I think there was one or two that had like a little wave to them, but in general, they printed out perfectly. And considering I didn't know what to set this resin at, that's pretty good. I'm sure if I experiment with this, you know, a few different settings, I'll get it right. So anyway, let's, let's look at those still shots just for like a few seconds to see just how it printed out. And then from there, we're going to go into the high res photos. And then after that, I'll be back for just one minute to chew your ear off on what I actually think of this resin. So, so looking at the still shot, you can see what I was talking about. The, the really my ultra, ultra light supports. And again, this figure, I'm going to show you in the completed pictures. It's super tiny. It's smaller than a quarter. So those tiny little thin supports you see there, you see one or two of them are a little bit wavy. Uh, that might be, you know, the resin could be a tiny little bit underexposed. Uh, but you see that they all came out pretty great. And even though this is covered in resin, so you can't see details, the print itself looks really, really nice. So I'm, I'm happy considering I didn't know anything about this resin when I tested it. Luckily, the numbers are at least very close to my Elegoo Gray setting. So it seems to all have worked out. Now let's take a look at the finished product. So this is just a picture for scale showing you next to the quarter. And even at this distance, you can see how great this print came out. So I'm pretty impressed with this resin. Now we're going to zoom way in, super high res. And I didn't really clean the model off, so I want to show it to you. And it's usually I dust it off and, you know, scrape a little with my X-Acto knife, make sure I get all the little extra bits and fuzz and dust off. Here I just want to show it kind of unadulterated. I changed just the toning on the photograph to try to highlight the details. It doesn't create details. It highlights details that are there so you can see them better. And what I'm really impressed with with this resin, forget the fact that I did wash it in water, which I, you know, now the more I think about it, the cooler that is actually, just be able to wash it in a tub of water instead of having the IPA, really cutting out one extra step and cutting out, look, it's bad enough that resin's toxic. IPA is also super nasty and is probably killing all of us slowly or maybe quickly, I don't know. So cutting the IPA out is a pretty great thing. Also, I'm printing with it right now. Again, it's been printing now for a day and a half since I got it. No smell in my room, so that's amazing. But what I wanted to say is look at the detail on the teeth, especially. The fangs came out really, really clear. And I don't have this resin, quote unquote, dialed in yet in terms of my settings, unless I just got amazingly lucky. I'm sure I can get it even better. But on a figure this small, to have the fangs come out that clear, I'm super duper impressed with this resin now. Um, and even though this figure is kind of solid, doesn't have a lot of really small, thin, delicate parts, even though it's a small piece, I did throw it up. My, the ceiling in my office 
is 12 feet high. I threw it up till it hit the ceiling and land it back down on my hardwood floor and no damage. So look, if I'm not saying that would hold up if I had a really delicate piece with long, thin, extended parts and I threw it up to the ceiling, I bet some of it might break off. But for a piece like this, throwing it up 12 feet and having it smashed down onto my hardwood floor, it didn't suffer any damage at all. So that, that part's also good. At least it's somewhat, it said that it's, you know, that it's tough. It's somewhat drop resistant, I guess would be the way to put it. Any big, delicate model, I'm sure, would break no matter what height you dropped it from. But, you know, at least the smaller, denser models like this won't break. So anyway, you know, I'm very, very impressed with the resin. And you're not going to look at me in my chair again. I realize there's no point to that. I'm just going to give you my views here. I really like that this resin doesn't seem to smell at all. And I can wash it in water. So the advancements in resin we're seeing just over the last, like, month or two is incredible. And really promising that hopefully one day none of us will be worried about printing in a small enclosed space, even without ventilation, when they can truly make a resin that, that, they, that they can avow is, you know, non-toxic for real. Again, those words don't mean anything. Let's say not hazardous to your health. Uh, then we'll really be there. So, uh, water wash resin, you know, if you don't like IPA or you have trouble getting IPA or those chemicals bother you, I would run out and get this water washable resin from Esun. Uh, it's it's pretty great, actually. And I, like I said, I can't believe how nicely it printed out. So anyway, hope you liked the review. If you did, please hit the like button for me. Please subscribe to my channel and you can learn how to uh, support prints and all kinds of other cool stuff for FDM and resin printing. And thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you again soon.